What's going on, guys? Uh, we're back with a special episode of the After Hours podcast. Um, it's a little different today. It's just Harry and I. Um, we've been doing most of our episodes with other members or moderators at MIC. And this time around, we kind of wanted to just drink with each other and chat and like kind of talk about shit. I'm actually going to raise my desk. Sorry, guys. Um, kind of just wanted to like shoot the shit and like talk about the market, talk about how we've been trading, maybe answer some of the members' questions that we've gotten over the past couple of days. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna jump right into it. So Harry, how has your trading been recently and how are you kind of adapting to the overall market right now? Yeah, I think for me, um, I mean, my trading has been pretty good. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like I've like, even though like a lot of people are saying like, oh, it's been a shitty market for longs and it's been a shitty market in general, which I mean, it has been, but my trading has been pretty good as far as like the kind of like adaptation of how it's been going. Like I've kind of noticed that in pre-market, we haven't been getting that many runners. So, I mean, I've honestly been like sleeping in an extra hour or an extra two hours because I'm like, there's no point in me sitting at the desk when there's no pre-market runners to even kind of want to get long on. So I'll usually start kind of longing, like looking near the open. Um, You know, if there's no hot chick, I'm obviously going to take a step back and kind of say to myself, well, okay, like I'll wait till zombie. I'll wait till we kind of get something that's worth wanting to long. That's doing enough volume for me to kind of like, for me to kind of like get a decent enough chart set up. And then uh, I'll look to kind of attack from there. But I mean, for me, it's been pretty good. The key for me, and I've been getting questions from a lot of people who are longing, you know, the key for me has just been being disciplined and not longing every single fucking goddamn thing that pops, you know, because yeah. we get tons of pops and uh you know a lot of stuff <laughs> a lot of stuff a lot of stuff right we yeah. get a stock that goes from like low a day to like a uh, friggin like middle line and everyone's like man this is gonna be the one this is gonna be the one and then it stuffs and they're like oh <clears throat> fuck you know so i, I think this might be <clears throat> the first like market cycle where like because you know how usually like alex always says he's like we're due for a runner we're due for a runner we're due for a runner this might be the first market cycle where like a runner doesn't like spark things. It might just slowly change back to like a a, a mover's market. But like by now, I feel like we would have had that like, fuck you runner, like that, like big, like something, but we just haven't gotten it yet. And I think, I don't know what it is. And you, we talked about this recently, like all these stocks are just pushing volume, like a little bit of volume and selling into the liquidity. Like everything has been like push, and then a huge brick order will come through and it just stuffs it down. And it's like, as a long, it's got to be tough for you. But one thing that's cool about you that I like and that a lot of other traders will like ask me about, I don't know why they asked me, but like, I feel like you have long setups that can pay you pretty much every day. And yeah. I feel like as a long, that's really, really crucial. And I think that's cool. Like, how did you, how did you even develop like those setups that you, I mean, I don't see many days where you're like, I'm not trading. Like yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. So like you have the setups that make you money. So how did you kind yeah. of develop those? And like, how did you kind of end up there? Well, I mean, for me, I'm not, I've never really been a strict kind of setup guy. I mean, my setup is always going to be those day one gappers, but I mean, I just look at it, you know, kind of, I think to a point of view is where I was a short seller before and I really did enjoy shorting, but I found myself, you know, a while back, where I would get some really, really good shorts on and they would pay me really, really, really well. But I was like, shit, like I've always wanted a long. That was the same thing with Austin. Like Austin would get really, really good shorts on. Like I remember like Alex would be like, damn, that was a sick short on like whatever, Harry, you got to start shorting. And I'm like, nah, bro. Like I just, I love longing. Like, and I just always kind of have. And, but also another thing is that I have watched a fuck ton of tape you know, and it's not even necessarily saying, oh, we got this, like, you know, whatever, you know, thousand share seller here, or we got this thousand share, or, you know, you know, a thousand share seller there or whatever. It's really been for me, just watching the price, seeing how things react, you know, looking at kind of like notable levels and just kind of using that to my advantage. I think that is what definitely has helped me out the most. Um, also kind of the MIC process of, you know, knowing what stocks to avoid that has definitely helped me as well. And just kind of hearing things from, you know, bouncing things off, especially in the main chat from like you, Tom, everyone, you know, we all are on the same page. I feel like every single morning and that's something that's definitely helped me a lot too. Uh, so, I mean, as far as setups, I'm not really a setup guy, but 
Um, I just pay attention to the price action and, uh, you know, that is all I, I kind of focus on, you know? Yeah. I feel like for you, it's like, man, we've talked about this in previous episodes. Like, you know, I know the set, like, like you said, we don't even call them setups, but I know the trades that you're going to take most of the time. Yeah. And, and I feel like you keep it really consistent. And like for all the longs that are inconsistent in the room, they seem to be taking inconsistent trades. I know. And I think, I think that's like, <clears throat> that's the biggest struggle because I think for shorting, especially like there's not too many setups. Like there's like shorting into a resistance, shorting into VWAP or like, you know, shorting a breakdown of a key support. But for longing, like, I feel like you could come up with so many different, like different trades. Like you could be like, this is a VWAP reclaim. This is a, a low a day hold. This is like a high a day breakout. This is like a, it's, you know, I don't know, fucking grinding up and it's like, whatever. And I, I feel yeah. like <clears throat> that's what's impressive about you is that you're able to, to st- like stay away from like trading like dumb shit. It, and yeah. like, how did that, how long did that take you? How did you get to that point of like stopping me? Like fucking stop trading this dumb shit. Yeah. Cause like, I remember like uh, <clears throat> probably like two or three years ago, like, you know, Jack Kellogg, uh, yeah. Yeah. he, he was, he's been an MIC before. Like, I mean, yeah. everyone, oh, everyone is kind of like Ben and, <laughs> you know i mean yeah, i was never in, like where'd you say yeah been in and out and like where'd you say? yeah i think a lot of people have been kind of in and out and um you know he he's he was a really good friend of mine and you know before when i when i you know was talking to him we were, we would always look for like kind of like these signals and like sometimes they were consistent sometimes they weren't we were always keeping tight risk on them we were like experimenting and learning and then i think i kind of said to myself like what if I just say, fuck it, and just take those trades where I know I'm going to be right? And I, I kind of followed that intuition because I was talking to a long trader today and he's like, I knew I was too early, but I still took the trade. Or I knew I was you know, not in the right frame of mind and I still took the trade. And for me, it's always been about maybe that third test of a level. You know that's going to break eventually, right? You know the third time is the highly kind of probable time for that to break. Or you know when, um, you know, you see that kind of, uh, you know, maybe high day rejection, but we keep kind of grinding higher and higher and higher. Like, you know, and you see shorts are stubborn. Like that's something, you know, you can always, uh, you know, look for. Uh, also, I mean, I find a lot of stuff is just me as a short seller thinking like, okay, where would I go like a rookie short all the time? You know, how would I get that kind of rookie short on? That's helped me tremendously. I like um, that. Because you know that as a short seller, your whole kind of mantra is just saying to yourself, well, these stocks have got to go down. They've got to go down. They've got to go down. They've got to go down. And then when they don't go down and they start to grind against you, you're like, well, I can't stop out here. I can't stop out here. And we finally go para. And when we go para and we get those big kind of candles that scare people out, I'm like, okay, well, selling here. And uh, that's how I've always kind of really done it, you know? Yeah. I think the the coolest thing too, like you actually, like, I hate these questions that I get that are like, how do you know when to get in and get out? And it's like, I think using a long bias trader is actually like easier because again, it's like, there is a point, technically we talked this last time, like the last episode as a long, it's like kind of weird because technically the stock can go to a hundred. Yeah. But like the reality is as a smart day trader and as an educated day trader, you know that you're always better to sell into resistance or sell into a key level or whatever. And I, I feel like that's like a, a talent you have is that like, I never see you really hold for like way longer than you should. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. always like, you get out when you're supposed to get out and it's not like you have a superpower. It's like, I feel like you're just selling at resistance you're getting like you're getting in the trade you're taking your move and then you get the hell out yeah and that's what leads to you as a as a being a consistent long trader i think is really impressive and i think it's like fucking hard and like that's why you don't see so many successful small cap long traders as well yeah you know i I think it's it's definitely difficult (laughs) but there are ways to make it easier you know i think just a Mm -hmm. lot of long traders the problem with longing is that as a short trader, you do have some stuff to your advantage. Like as long as you don't long the hot chick and do really dumb, dumb, dumb shit, 
uh, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty decent, right? I mean, you have yeah, that yeah. kind of broken stock, you have that low hanging fruit set up, you have all that shit. But when you're a long trader, you really have to say and evaluate all the stocks in the morning. Like this morning, like CEI, you know, I didn't end up longing it and I wish I kind of did. And, but on Mondays, sometimes I'm a little bit off my game. I find like on Mondays, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit <laughs> off. I'm not as aggressive on Mondays, just always has been. But on CEI, when they kind of popped it up, they, they pop it up to like 340, bring it back down to like 320, 310, $3. And then they start grinding and grinding, and grinding up. Like as a short, I knew every single short seller in MIC was interested in that. And when that yeah. started to kind of go the other way, um, <laughs> that could have maybe been a good opportunity. You know, I mean, Alex nailed and bailed, everyone nailed and bailed it. But the people who hang on for those kind of like home run trades and like fader trades, like those are the people who get crushed. Yeah. Like those are the people who I probably <laughs> crushed, right? Yeah. Well, I would today I was almost one of those guys because like I didn't hold on to it per se, but like I got in at like 340, 350. Yeah. And like the problem was like that was my line. You know, this is annoying and it pissed me off this morning. It, it it's put me in a bad mood because like lately I've had this feeling of like I actually been making good money, but yeah, I always feel this like underperformance feeling. Yeah. Um, and it's like no matter what. So like today, like 350, 340, 360 was my initial plan this morning. Like it's in it's in chat. That was my line that I wanted, but I got in like too big at like 345 and 350. Yeah. Just like because there was a seller at 350 and it was like it kept refreshing and I just kept and I actually got in like pretty big. I was up to like not pretty big. I was up to like 15,000 shares at like yeah. 350 average or 349 average or something. And I was just sitting there like I knew it too. Like I was in the trade and I was like I was like, this is grinding the shit out of anyone who's shorting like yeah, yeah, yeah. At every fucking pop. And like, I knew it. And like, and yeah. honestly, that's why I had such a small day too. Cause like I, it ended up, it ended up tanking. Like I had, I had more shares to put on. I had yeah. 5,000 more. It ended up tanking. But as soon as it went green, I actually just took it off because I kind of just waited too long on it. Like I had yeah. my, I knew what I wanted my risk to be. And I was kind of just taking it like as a stupid punishment. Like I got in too early you know, my plan is working, but it's like, I'm just, it was stupid. And it's like, I feel like those are the times that you really take advantage of like shorts is when they're in those positions of like, yeah. they should just fucking cut it. You know, yeah. they should just cut it because then yeah. what happens is it goes fucking parabolic. And CI is weird because it's, it just trades so much volume, but it's SSR, but there's so much supply. So it's yeah. like, I feel like it was going to be hard for it to parabolic, but like, that's where I feel like you get your biggest moves from. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And that, those are the types of, you know, plays that I'm looking for or where we get that initial push and then we fade off and every single short is like, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. And we start kind of grinding higher and we grind a bit higher and we churn a bit more and we churn a bit more. Every single person who's short on that, you know, situation is like, shit, like this has got to go down. This has got to go down. And I'm just going to be like, okay, you know, where's a, where's a good place for me to take profits? Like, where is every single short going to cover or at least be a little bit scared, you know? And I'm, I'm not delusional. Like I understand that, uh, you know, if we go para I'm selling, you know, I don't yeah. think this is going yeah. to 10 or 20 or whatever dollars, <laughs> you know, there's been plenty, plenty of times where I've like hiked out early, but I'm going to keep those consistent gains where like we get a candle that like should end the stock. And yeah. then, you know, we get into the afternoon and we're still grinding and grinding and grinding. It's like, man, like there's yeah. obviously something keeping this up. There's obviously a bitter here. And I think it's just really like for shorts, for longs, for anyone, it's a nail and bail market. And today on CEI, if you were long and you held that shit, even if you were long, it, it, like, you know, like from, from where you kind of like, I guess like, even if you were long from like, where, where was it? Like 320, yeah. It, it, let's say you were long yeah. from that yeah. and then you held it all day. Like, I mean, you probably would have ended up getting fucked. So, I mean, yeah. shorts, longs, nail and bail market. I feel like, I feel like right now it's like, it's, it's almost like a no one's market. Like it's, it's a nail and bail market, but I feel like no one has like a, a major, like there's been days, like the day that CEI like really crashed, like yeah. that was like a, a good day for shorts. But I feel like other than that, like every day, 
like every stock has given like longs and shorts, like a small window of opportunity. Yeah. And then after that, it's kind of like, it's game over. And like, yeah, as, as someone like, like, so I know like day trading for you is like your, your main source of income. Like you live off day trading, yeah. right. Which is like sick. And it's like, so for you, do you find, do you get like actual stress like outside of the market because of that when it's a market like this? Cause like I said, you do have your trades that you're making every day, making money, but obviously it's not the best market for both sides of people, I would say. So like, do you get stressed outside of this or like, and does it affect your trading at all? Or I had the best market like in COVID, like a really yeah. good market. Like yeah, I have had, a couple I months, have such, years. Such a fucking like, like career record, like amazing, amazing gains uh, outside of like, kind of like this year. But also yep. this year has been pretty good to me. Like, as long as I don't do any dumb shit, like I find myself just getting rewarded and like doing dumb shit to me is like chasing a low volume ticker, chasing a stock at the highs, you know, just chasing at the top of the range. That's dumb shit to me. So as long as I don't do any of that, you know, I'm on track for a great year. But I mean, that being said, I'm not going to go out and, uh, you know, I, I, I hate to jinx myself just like Alex, like Alex is always saying knock on wood. <laughs> and I knock on wood as well because like, you know, you don't want to jinx anything, but I mean, this, this market that we're in right now is a great market for me. It's giving me plenty of range. It's giving me plenty of time to kind of get in and get out. It's giving me, it's, it's so predictable. Whereas like you hear me in Austin be like, Oh, we're depressed. Like, Oh, stuff at the highs, but it's so predictable that we're <laughs> like, Oh man, like we know where this is going to go. So I'm not going to go out of my way and say, I'm going to hold for a dollar higher. If stocks yeah. start running two, three, four dollars higher, that's a signal for me that I need to hold on a bit longer. But high day stuff, and I'm in from middle to bottom of the range with a couple thousand shares. I mean, I'll take that all day, every day. Yeah. I love oh, yeah. it. I love it. So that's what I've kind of been, you know, doing. I mean, I don't, I, I see, I, I just don't really get stressed as much anymore because I just have so much money saved, you know? Um, see, that's key. That's key. I, I feel like traders, especially like, like I know guys and I've met traders throughout the time that I've been in the community that like, they trade like four times a year. They trade like the first red day setup or like a, a parabolic, like dries. Yeah. And that, that's it. Like they don't trade anything else. They trade four or five times yeah. a year once a quarter, whatever. And that makes their year. And then the rest of the time, they're just really like frugal and like live. Like, I mean, they might make like a million, two million or more, but they still live very like casual. And like, yeah. I think that was a lesson. It's, a, it's good that you know this young, but like that was a key lesson that I learned in the past few years was like, I've always been a saver, but I realized that as I get older too, and like more involved in trading, it's like, you just want to know that you got it in the bank. And like, that's when trading to me be, became, became less stressful. That's when using size became way less stressful yeah, too. Like, 100%. like, dude, like using like more than 10,000 shares, like a few years ago, I probably would have been like shitting my pants. Cause I would have been like, well, if that rips against me $5, like, I mean, obviously you don't want that, but like, that was your, always your fear. And yeah. it's like, as you accumulate more money in the bank, it's almost like taking those setups becomes easier. And that's like yeah. why, like, I try to say it to guys all the time in, in MIC. It's like, it's like, I, what helped me the most is like, I just take the small gains. Like, like people see it, like I'll have like, a, a I'll make a thousand dollars. I'll make like $2,000. I might make yeah. $500, okay. but I just let it grow and build. And like, sure. Like then hopefully like one of these days I'll have a bigger, bigger day. But like that, I think allows me to stay so stress-free and like, yeah. I don't really give a shit if I make money day in, day out. And I think that that probably is huge for you as well. Yeah, that is massively huge because like, I mean, I lived with my parents for so long, right? I got, yep. I got, I got so lucky where <laughs> I was in university, learned how to trade, you know, dropped out of university. My parents were like, you can live with us for a few years, save some money. Now I'm just chilling. And that was the biggest you know, that, that was the best launch pad that any parent could give me, you know? Yeah. And so I'm thankful for my parents for that. But also if you're trading right now and you're just staring at the chart and you, and you just say to yourself like, okay, I'm just going to play what's in front of me. I don't care about how much money I make. It's hard to, to develop that kind of like subconscious 
uh i don't care yeah. um i i just want to kind of uh you know play play what's in front of me and i just want to trade the stocks that are in front of me that is what is going to make you the most money that type of mindset but if you have the mindset of like uh well if i put in my spreadsheet and i make uh 10 percent today or 20 percent tomorrow i'm gonna be rich right that is not going to be the the type of mindset that you want right both of us both know it where if you're just chilling like you look at alex right alex is a is a probably the absolute best example that i've learned from as like a mentor same with bao and as a person you know i feel like we both kind of been able to learn from him whereas like yeah he he is literally like I'm only adding size on the plays that I know size is worthy. Yep. And yep. that was just such a key turnaround to me. Also the way he adds to his winners. Yeah. Um, you right. Like he, he has like maybe like a couple thousand shares on his line, sees it reject bigly, adds bigly. Yep. A mass, <laughs> mass. Everyone, everyone's writing like, how do I add to a winner? Literally just, just gonna watch say. Alex trade. Watch how Dude. Alex does it. Just yep. such a fucking uh, big lesson for me, right? Big, Dude, big, big it, lesson. Like, all, if Alex is gonna, if Alex is going to add into a fucking uh, red candle, adding size when he knows he's right and he knows he's got it in the bag, I'm adding some fucking size to a green candle when I yeah. know I'm fucking right and I've <laughs> fucking got it in the bag, you know. It's Dude, not changing. Like, <laughs> it's just knowing that you're fucking right. I agree. I, I feel like everyone, I swear. So like people probably don't know this, but as a mod, like we get tons of DMs from members like asking questions and shit. And like, I honestly think 90% of my questions are seriously like, how do I add to a winner as a short seller? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, you're, you're, there's two types of traders, right? That, and that we're surrounded with, like you got Bao who like, Bao doesn't really add to winners. Bao scales and he's a robot. So like, you either trade like a robot at all times and you scale accordingly or you don't. Like I think it's really hard to mix the two. But yeah. like if you want to add to winners like Alex, like like Harry said, you just have to fucking watch him because when you watch his trading, it's like once you know you're right, and if you don't know when you're right or not, then you shouldn't be adding to a trade. That exactly. that's like a key a key key thing. Like if you're adding like like today, this was a mistake I made. It's like I added almost to my full size when I didn't know I was right. I felt I was right, but I didn't know that I was right. And I think that's what fucked me. And that's why I was yeah. too early. And it's like, if you're adding size to those trades where you know you're right, like either you get in to know you're right is different for everybody. It's either you get that rejection you want, you get the death, big red death candle, stuff candle, or it just gets to your line and it confirms that your level, like whatever it is, like that, those are your signals. Like I don't fucking wait to get in. Like I, there was a question on here that was like, uh, one of them was like, when you're adding to a position, like how do you do it without removing liquidity? Like, dude, that's pretty much all I do. Like if I'm going to get in, like I want to get in, like I don't really give a shit. Like I was mark not market ordering, but I was like removing liquidity to fill like 5,000 shares at a time. I don't give a shit that I'm racking up like $15 in commissions or whatever, because if that shit goes, like yeah, you make doesn't a shit matter. ton of money. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's like people overthink all of it so much like i don't give a fuck feel- i'll fucking market order when i want a fucking market order you know i don't have a fucking set rule i'll fucking do whatever i want when i yep. know that i'm going to make money and that's yep. the thing is the- like if you know that you're going to make money based on the chart based on what is in front of you not based on some arbitrary p l goal not based on some fucking bullshit you look at what is in front of you and you have that gut feeling not those you know the thing is with long traders is that They'll, they'll go long. Uh, uh, they'll be like, this is the breakout or this is the fucking whatever one time. They'll chase strength again. They'll chase strength again. And finally on that fourth fucking goddamn time, they're right. And that's where I'm fucking long because it's like first time we got up to that level, we were too extended. We need to pull back. Second time we got to that level, we got up there too quick. And that's what I'm thinking, right? We we got up there too quick. I'm literally, I literally just sit all day, and this is completely fucking true. I sit all goddamn day, and I'm like, that wasn't right. Nope, that wasn't right. Nope, that wasn't right. Nope, that wasn't right. Because as a long trader, you need to be so goddamn picky, and you need yeah. to be able to say, and you need to 
subconsciously admit it to yourself and be very, very real with yourself where you're like, if, if this actually goes, I can still be unaffected for the rest of the day. Right. Yep. Like, because if, like if you miss it. Yeah. Because there are yep. a ton of big pumps. There are a ton of big dumps for short sellers. Right. And usually the reverse ends up happening. Right. We see a big dump pre-market. Everyone piles in short. We start going the other way. No one wants to cover. We go pair by the open. We see a shit, you know, big pump. Everyone has that long FOMO. And then boom, boom, boom. The, you know, they all get stuck, right? So it's about knowing market psychology as well. I think that's that's helped me, you know, paramount. Yeah. How how is a, a long do you I, I don't think I've ever asked anyone this question, but how is a long do you differentiate the setups that you take size on versus not because like I, I know as a short how I differentiate like where I'm going to use like a couple thousand shares and like go way bigger but like how do you do that as a long if I'm adding so this is a that that's actually a very good question so for me I've always kind of said to myself uh a lot of the time it's based on time of day so pre-market I'm going to take less size because I know what's kind of going on. Uh, when the market opens, um, I might take a bit more. And the reason why is because we can get that initial push higher that really starts the day off right. We mm-hmm. haven't gotten it usually like in the in the past couple months. So for the past couple months, like I've definitely sized down at the market open. 100% size down market open. Zombie times, I'll start sizing up again. Uh, midday, if we're doing very, very, very good volume, I'll keep that size and I'll maintain it. Otherwise, uh, you know, I'll kind of leave alone the midday chop and then uh, mm-hmm. end of day. Uh, that's when I'll look to maybe size up a little bit again. But my size has really been about time time of day, you know? Okay. Do you have a 30%? Like, do longs use a 30% or like any sort of style like that? Or do you? Um, it it's going to depend. Like if we're under view app and I'm not that confident, then yeah, I'm going to size down. My, my trades have always been about kind of the confidence. I think high a day, you need to use less size. And mm. if you are trading underneath view app, you need to use probably lesser size as well. Unless we're like just underneath view app in the middle of the range. That's when I don't have that kind of uh, problem because like, yeah, I'm just going to keep adding a little bit all the way up until like you want to as a long the key really is is that you want to kind of you want to slightly time it so um and i'm just gonna start giving away shit because like you know why not you want to slightly <laughs> time it so like you kind of have that excitement and you move down into that kind of like desperation but you don't want to long that type of you know desperation you want to kind of see it grind higher and maybe start stopping some shorts out and that's where you want to start kind of starting a long position and then as we kind of move a bit higher and we kind of maybe stagger you want to keep adding there (coughs) and then once we get that excitement you feel it on tape where you you know it speeds up you you can feel in your bones you know where we're getting those green prints going through everyone is excited everyone is just saying hot chick hot chick hot chick amazing boo 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 that's where I'm starting to sell. I like that. I like that a lot. I feel like, I feel like that's a really in-depth way to, to add because you're saying like, you're almost adding into shorts pain. Like you're like, you're adding into people yeah. who refuse to cover Yeah. and like the shorts were just adding a little bit here, adding a little bit here, adding a little bit here. And by the time it goes parabolic, now you're adding as a, as a long into the times when like shorts are buying with you. So yeah. they don't, not only are people buying it, shorts are stopping out, buying the stock up. Yeah, and then you are gonna be the first one to get out too by the time because by the time they're just figuring out what the fuck happened, you're already gone, and you're like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And people are like, oh, you're in and out so quick, or you're this so quick, but bro, like, I'm just taking my money and running. I don't trust yeah. any of these stocks at all. Yeah, I, I, that's true because for you, you're probably one of the the most strict. Um, like with risk that I've seen in long bias traders, like I don't, I've only seen you take in like three years, like one decent loss. And that was the fucking, uh, the news one. That was, was the, fucked. That was fucked. That was, that was fucked. But wait, but whatever that was, that, but again, three years, that's nothing. 
And also like on your day to day, if I see you take a loss, it's usually like 10 cents, like even on like a higher price stock. So like, yeah, and all right. I got stopped. Like I'm stopped guys. Hi. Yeah. You know, like, but, like, I, what, I'm not. How did you do it? Like, why are you so tight on your like stops? Like, have you ever considered being more smaller, but like scaling or like, did how did you come to be that someone who just gets in at their size they want kind of, and then like keep your wrist so tight and like, how long did it take you to kind of develop that? um for that type of shit uh well see the thing is is that i always wanted to know that i wanted to maintain a tight wrist because i'm a stubborn person yeah um i'm really stubborn and so if i don't have a hard stop in i'm not i'm not gonna want to get out of that type of position you know i'm i'm so fucking stubborn like yeah i'm i'm such a piece of shit where it's like i'm a stubborn guy right and so for me um I guess like, uh, I don't know, like, I just, I just really said, like, this is all I'm risking. And like, you better get a good entry because this is it. So yeah, I'm either right, right away, or I'm not right at all. And, you know, a lot of people are like, wow, you only got stopped out for 10 cents. But it's like, no, my plan is to get stopped out for 10, 20, 30 cents. Like that is all I'm willing to risk. And, um, uh, so I, I like that. I'm, I, I'm very disciplined to time myself the right way, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's cool because like, dude, how many long bias traders do we talk about that we see, like, there'll be long sum at $3, then they add it to 80, then they add it to 60 and to 20 and two. And then yeah, it's, it's like, like, this shit they, is going the wrong way, bro. Yeah, you know? This isn't like, doing the right thing. Like, and it's like, for you, it's like, I think that every long bias trader in the room would benefit from keeping that kind of tight risk. Like, yeah getting into your spot, waiting for your perfect entry and then keeping yeah. that tight risk. I feel like you're one of the only guys I see do that. Whereas like, again, the losing long buys traders are the ones that are like, if you find, unless it was your plan from the start, cause you can trade however you want, but unless your plan from the start was like, I'm going to long summit three and then summit two, you're fucked. <laughs> you're fucked. Like if you find yourself yeah. starting to like scale down, it's like, what the fuck happened? Like, the problem <laughs> is that the shorts are just going to keep adding with you. Yeah. Right. Like, it's never going to bounce. You need, you need situations where people are short and they're caught off guard by that move where they're yeah. confidently short, right? You need confident shorts. I, I loved CEI today. I didn't take it, but you, you, I know how confident you and Alex were. Yeah. And that was okay for me because like I had such a low average. I knew you guys were adding higher. Like that's, that's, it's good for both of us in that type yeah. of situation. Yeah. And I, I understood the amount of supply. I understood the amount of, you know, whatever. Yeah. I was not looking for a big move on that at all. Or fuck, I'm such a retard. I didn't even fucking trade that. But I, oh, yeah. I'm, just, you, I'm yeah. talking as if I would have fucking traded it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, I was I was watching it. Like yeah. I, I watched it for a long time and I was like, okay, where would I get in? Where would I get out? And I was like, okay, like three, 360, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And then it ended yeah. up. I mean, the, more. Yeah. Because I did probably, the initial type of move and. You know, yeah. I, I think, I think so many longs in the room, like they long, like broken fucking charts, which I never understand. Like, like I don't see you long a broken chart very often. Like you'd say like, it's got to prove itself. Like if a broken stock, proves that it's like it has potential to go higher it's different but like i see most people trying to long like these like like cei technically like yeah it has opportunity too but it's like i feel like as a long that's not where you're now going full size and you're like all right this is gonna go <laughs> this is gonna be the yeah. big mover like it's just it, there's so many factors against you and it's like and I, again that comes down to stock selection like how many times do we talk about like if you're picking the wrong stocks to trade that's 90% of why you can't fucking trade. Cause you're just, you're trying everything on the wrong stock. You're doing the right stuff on the wrong stock. Yeah. So, I mean, it's your, it's your biggest advice I hear all the time. It's Alex's It's the same shit. It's just, 100%. you need to, fi- you need to find the right shit. Like and it takes a while, dude. Like it took me a while to figure out what I was good at. Like, I mean, it's part of it. Like, I think it's, it's part of this, but I don't know. But I mean, I guess we do have like a bunch of uh, questions we can kind of get into. Yeah, I just um, want to say one thing is that yeah, go ahead. The thing is with uh, longing is that you need high volume tickers, right? You know, you need a high volume ticker like CEI. Even though I didn't trade it, I literally wanted to trade that stock so bad. I was watching it today, 
And I watched it kind of get over the high and I was like, shit, I didn't get in. I didn't get in. Oh, well, you know, and that's why I was like kind of talking like I was in it because to me, like I was in that trade, like, even though I didn't have any like money, like in it or anything, like when I watch tickers and I watch price action and I, I watch stuff, I I'm literally like, I literally like deeply pretend that I'm in it. And so, you know, if I'm in a type of situation like CEI, I'm like, where would I sell? Where would I sell? Where would I sell? You know, and I'm literally just going to keep doing if, if And for any advice of anyone, you know, if you want to, like, what is going to be Alex's number one thing when he says, uh, watch price action, it's going to be get some skin in the game, right? And yeah. so I always pretend like I have some type of skin in the game. So I'm watching CEI. I'm like, I got, I got, you know, 5,000 shares long from here. Like, where am I going to sell? Where am I going to sell? That is the best practice that you can get because you feel like you have skin in the game. And even if you don't, you know, you, you still feel like you do. And that's why I said like, oh yeah, I'm looking to sell 360. Like I really was looking to sell 360. And if I had have gotten, you know, shares long down there, I definitely would have. But I think for a lot of long traders, the issue is that they want to long stocks before things have gotten, you know, going, right? They want to get in trades, you know, before people have gotten in them, before everyone's found out about them, before. But they just want to get in too goddamn early. And that's the problem. You know, they yeah. just want to get yeah. in too goddamn early. I have, a, I have a random question that just popped in my head, actually. And I don't know why, but I wanted to ask you this for a while now and I completely forgot. So how old are you now? 22. You're 22? Jesus, fuck. So how is someone, like I know recently, and like we won't get into it because it's, it's private, but like I know you talked about like stresses outside of the market, like shit that goes on. And like I've told you about shit that goes on inside of my life and like yeah. stuff like that. How do you... Um, how do you deal with that stress when it comes to trading? Because if we know trading is so, uh, so mental and like so emotional and like, how do you, how do you deal with shit like that? Like outside of the market and like, does it affect your trading inside? And like, what do you do to kind of balance that out? Um, well, my mom's a counselor. So when I'm home, I have like my own Wendy Rhodes. That's cool. That's and that has been so. It's probably not as hot as Wendy Rhodes though. That has been. <laughs> Oh my Jesus. <laughs> Someone's going to clip this shit. Anyway, um, um, you know, I have my own kind of like mother to kind of like help me or yeah. if I ever need to like to call my mom, like I will, because like, it's interesting. Yeah. She can literally like talk me out of some like situations where like, you know, maybe there's a situation where there's a family issue or something yeah. like that. And that has helped me so fucking much. Um, I think another thing is like, if I ever feel myself on the verge of getting on a tilt and believe me, you can feel it. Like oh, yeah. people <laughs> who are like, oh, I couldn't feel that coming on. You know, if you've watched, you know, a ton of stocks go without you, you know, if you have watched, <laughs> you know, and you've missed, like it's better off just to leave. And that's some, something for someone who has money but also you should pretend that you have money. You know, you should pretend that you don't need to trade today. You should pretend that you don't need, you know, anything because yeah. that is what kind of helps me. I speak from the point of someone who has, you know, done very well, but also, you know, you should, you know, pretend that you're like me. What would I fucking do? I'd fucking leave. You know, there's times where you just see me leave randomly and people are like, oh, why do you leave? Why do you leave? It's because I watched three socks go up without me and I know what happens on the backside. You know, yeah. I, I can I can you know go to Starbucks for a five, six dollar coffee and avoid, you know, two, three grand or four grand worth of losses. You know, yeah. I know oh, myself yeah. so well. That's cool. That's cool. I don't know why I've, I've always thought about that question, but I guess there's never been a, a good time to ask. But yeah, so. So let's get through some of these. So um, this one is like a short bias question, I guess. He's like, do you scale uh, into lines or starting at lines? No jackpots are short. Um, jackpot, jo jackpot bones is actually on one of our episodes. You should go back and uh, check that out. Um, for me, like I know Harry doesn't really scale like into positions, not much, like if small, if all. But I know for me, like I don't really scale. Like my scaling is almost just a method of curing FOMO. So like. If I have like a $4 line and it's at like 350, 
like I might short, like, and let's say I have like 5,000 shares located for it or something like that. I might short like 250 shares into pops, like, like 570, 580, like whatever, like around there. Because like, to be honest, like, and maybe this is like a weird way to think of it. Like, I don't care if I'm down like a hundred or two hundred dollars, like on the front side, because it's just like that's like nothing, and it's just enough to make me like kind of have skin in the game, like Harry was talking about, and focus. Yeah. And then the second it gets to my line and gives me that kind of confirmation, like that's kind of where I'm gonna, that's where I'm just gonna hit my size. Like I'm not, I don't have a fantasy order waiting there. Like if it gets there and it does what I want it to, I'm just gonna like take hit the bid and like get in. Um. So as far as scaling, like that's kind of how that's kind of how I do it. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's going to be like, it. there's really going to be for longing and like, maybe like Bao has a different kind of approach to me because I've watched him trade, you know, for so long, like he will scale multiple lines long and he will scale multiple lines like exiting. But for me, it's been like, there's one area that I want. If the area doesn't work, I'm out quick. If the area doesn't work, you know, I mean, that's, uh, yeah. that's, that's it. I like that. Um, do you, Harry? Do you strictly trade according to your bias or cap size, or do you dabble in other areas, uh, swing trades, large caps, etc., and just don't talk about it? And as your account grows, have you started investing in other areas? If so, which ones? Uh, I mean, for me, like I have had swing trades in the past, but like I'm not really a big swing trade guy. Um, you know, I'm always going to be invested in the stock market as a whole. Like that's something that I'll always preach on. Like I'll buy dips. I will invest long term. You know, but I'm not. A, I'm. I. I don't think that deserves to be in like the large cap trading channel. Like, oh, I'm making this investment and I'm holding it yeah. for you know a long time. Like I don't know. Like so. I mean, I. I do that. Um. You know, I. I buy dips, obviously. Um, yeah. Because who the fuck wouldn't? Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's really it. You know, I, I, I'm not really a swing trader. I just trade, you know, I have my own money. I just, you know, chill. That's really bad. Yeah. I, I really only trade my like niche. Like I, 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 I mean, outside yeah. of the mark, like, like when it comes to day trading, like I'm only fucking trading, like what I, what we talk about in the room, because I've been the guy before who's traded multiple different things or tried to. And like, honestly, like most of the time that shit doesn't work. It's like really hard for traders to go back and forth because when you're trading between like large caps and small caps, like not only is your size so different, price action is different to me. Like everything's different and you're just fighting different people. So I don't do that. Uh, as far as outside of the market, um, I actually got some really good advice from Alex. And then something I've been doing since I was young is I've always invested in, uh, I do the Warren Buffett method, the low cost index funds. So I invest in stuff like VU and like, I've been like buying that since it was trading at like a hundred something bucks. Yeah. And like now yeah. it's sitting at like 400. So it's like, that's all I do. Like I wait for dips and like I, you know, I get in and I contribute most of like a large portion of my paycheck actually to my retirement. And then I just buy these things. And it's like, it's kind of amazing yeah. to see how much it's gone up and, um same with crypto like i lately actually as for a long time now i've been like i buy ethereum and bitcoin that's it i don't buy any of the shit coins like fuck that dumb shit but i just buy a little bit of ethereum and bitcoin and i use a small portion of money that i don't give a shit if it goes to zero in that way like i can kind of continuously do that and like not stress it and that's like kind of been like what my focus is actually the last couple of years um hmm. you want to find yeah. a good question in there um just looking around like people asking about uh, like what do you do for drinking <laughs> and like you know like not really a lot of uh, uh, let's see I guys people are people are asking about like spies and mic and like spies in other rooms like that i'm telling you the best thing you can do for your trading career is like stop caring about shit like that like dumb shit in like the trading community like Twitter is a great place. And like, I've met some really good friends and like, it's amazing, yeah. but like, stop giving a shit about all that, the stupid, like dumb dramas and stuff. It does nothing you to your wall. No one, but... no one gives a fuck about that. Like if you make money, <laughs> you don't care about that shit. Um, yeah. Question for the podcast. When you wake up still drunk, how drunk, you know, are you before you decide not to trade? uh that's, me, a, that's actually not a bad question for me that's a pretty good question um 
<laughs> I gotta be pretty knocked the fuck out. Like James knows I need to be pretty knocked. The thing is, is that when you're when you're successful and quote unquote successful or quote unquote good at something, like I I, I don't brag, like you know, I'm fucking, you know, not like that. But uh I gotta know. You get a feeling where you know, like, all right, buddy, it's not happening today, you know? <laughs> so I literally, I'll get my brain, like my brain will be like, can we salvage this day? Because anytime I go out, I'm like, I automatically assume that the next day I cannot work. I cannot do anything. That's it. So my brain will be like, can we salvage this day? If my brain is like, yeah, then I'm like, all right, we can salvage it. Go to Starbucks, get a fat coffee, you know, drink a lot of water, get some ibuprofen, get some medication in me. You know, that's what my kind of process is on it. But, you know, if I'm just too out of it, like I know, like uh, there was an election in Canada and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty knocked after that one. So I uh, didn't uh, I, trade the next I, fe- I feel like that's like, it is a funny question, but it's also like really, real true because a good question, because it's like, the fact is like, as you get more experience, like sure. Like you can also, you can trade like fucking drunk. You can trade like high, you can do whatever you want. I don't like to do any of that shit because I just find like trading for me, like I need to be in the perfect mindset. And if I'm yeah. not at all, if I'm distracted, like those are my days where I usually take a red day. So like, especially like if I'm fucking hungover, like I feel like garbage, like, which I try to stop doing. Like I try to not really drink on the weekdays, but um, if I do, do I, it's like, do I, I just- have- done sorry 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 no yeah good yeah go go no sorry Great, i was just saying like, fucking, done. he's like i'll go do a live contest see who can do more shots <laughs> now nah, which moderators have better bromance aloha and harry or tom and james like eh. i fuck, well, i fucking hate tom so um yeah you guys do a podcast good. where you eat edibles like no <laughs> what are these questions like <laughs> bro come on like ask me some real fucking shit what signals do you look for that tell you you can cut a position earlier than you planned? For me, it's going to be a stuff. For James, you want to cut. Oh, sorry. A, I, I, I thought you were going to keep going. You cut that. a position uh, earlier than you planned. It's going to be a, probably a green candle, like massive yeah. teleport or something. I don't know. For me, it's like either a time stop, like things just like don't really feel like right. Yeah. Or yeah, like a massive candle through my fucking line. Like that's it. Like yeah, time other than that, stick to your plan. Key. Time stops oh. are fucking key. Austin taught me. Well, I remember when Austin was teaching, preaching about that, and I was like, dude, these are fucking awesome. Like, time stops are one of the biggest difference makers in my trading because, like, now I, I, you just you aren't getting caught in those like dumb fucking. How like uh, this is this is actually a decent one. How do you determine taking liquidity versus adding? For me, if I'm going to add liquidity. It's going to be like more of like a plan type of thing. If I'm going to take liquidity, it's going to be more of like unplanned, but I know that I'm going to make money right away. Yep. Yep. I generally don't add, uh, add liquidity, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm pretty much always like hitting the bid to get in. I, I don't know. It's, it's, I only add liquidity if, if I need to like set fantasy orders to like prevent myself from doing something dumb. But most of the time, I'm just like, I'm fine waiting for my spot and I'll, I'll just, hit the what, bid when it gets there what patterns have you found worked in the last year 2020 compared to now for me i found a lot of things in 2020 would run at the open now we're seeing a lot of things kind of fading off at the open and picking back up in the afternoon james i think i think 2020 as a short there was like all these like um i would say there was a lot of like pre-market like stocks that would like gap up and then like kind of tank towards the open and pre-market trading seemed a lot easier, even with all the volume. And like, there was much more range pre-market. And now it's like, now, like, I feel like you have to wait all of pre-market to like get a safe short. And I just think it makes more sense. And like, something I want to say, even before you read the next question, like, guys, like when you have opportunity to ask like mods and like other traders questions, like don't waste it. I'm not saying these questions are dumb, but don't waste it asking dumb questions either. Like Bow has said this recently, like Perry and I want to talk about like being a mod, like what that fucking, what you deal with like on the day, daily basis. Like guys, if, if you are a musician and you get the chance to talk to fucking Jimi Hendrix or someone like some great musician, you're not going to waste your fucking time asking him dumb questions. Like, like stuff that you could figure out on your own stuff that you could really realize. And like, but 
these are the times, like, especially when you're talking to Alex Bow, everybody, like, ask deep, meaningful questions about trading that only experienced traders know. Stuff, other stuff, like, forget that shit. Like, it, it really, you got to find that stuff on your own, in my opinion. Yeah, like, like, really put the work in. Like, what edible you take or what fucking <laughs> drink you drink is not going to make you a better trader. You anyway. can DM me that and I'll tell you, but, but no, I mean, we're, I, I didn't even realize that we're coming up on like a fucking hour. <laughs> no, I know. I know. It's going to be an hour yeah. fucking thing. I've just, <laughs> how, how should a trader trains their trading once they cross PDT? You shouldn't. Agreed. You just shouldn't. That's the last question. So. Yeah. Perfect. I, again, guys, like a lot of these questions, like they come with experience as well. Like you'll get them over time, but the reality is like take advantage of like being M- MIC right now is going into a transitionary period where like, I was just talking to Alex about it. We're becoming seriously the Harvard of trading and there's no more monthly memberships. It's all fucking either annual or lifetime. So it's people that actually give a shit to do this. You're paying good money to invest in your life. Don't fucking waste it. Like come here, put in the work and you're going to get something out of it. And if you're coming here and you're just fucking around, like the reality is like, it's, you're, it's just going to be really hard for you to make it in this. But if you come in, you want to be surrounded by like-minded people, like you're going to yeah. find success and you're yeah. going to make a fuck ton of money. Like, yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree just on all that. Like there's so many people who have came in to monthly who unfortunately Bow and Alex have had to deal with like trolls and like all this shit. It's just crazy. And the thing is, is that Bow and Alex are so nice. They're like, we'll refund you to leave. Like, now, <laughs> like what? I, like, I would never. I would I've never. never heard anything like that. Like, I literally see Bow. He's like, no, you know, you, you don't have the right mindset for this. Like, you, uh, we'll, we'll pay for you to leave. Like, that's insane. Anyway, we're coming up on the yeah. hour, but. Yeah, I know. I'm fucking wiped, dude. I'm fucking. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. But... Definitely good yeah. chat definitely good yeah. chat talking about things and uh yeah, oh, yeah and, uh, we'll see you guys for the next one yeah